Let's get to the message of God's Word. And so if you'll turn with me to Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34 is a passage of Scripture that for, for many, many years as, as a, a pastor, it, 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 it's, it's been a, a passage of motivation for me. Uh, a passage in which I, I try to examine my life and my ministry uh, utilizing these words among other words. I'll be sharing with you another uh, passage from Matthew chapter 9 that is a, a life verse uh, of mine uh, that I've had, you know, uh, since, uh, since being a teenager. And that's getting further and further back. You forget about those, some of those memories, and they fade, but this verse has never faded from my, uh, my heart and, and, and my mind as I uh, try to live for the Lord. But I want to share with you Ezekiel 34, and then in the, the remaining uh, Sundays, uh, my messages uh, during this summer, we're going to go further into uh, this area. I've entitled the, the, this, this series, or uh, this particular introduction, What Should We Do? What Should We Do? And uh, I'll explain why I have that question, but let me, uh, let me read from Ezekiel 34, verses 1 through 6. Uh, to begin this message. Would you please stand with me as we honor God's Word and we hear God's Word speak to us again today. It says, The Word of the Lord came to me. This is Ezekiel, prophet of Israel. The Word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Woe to the shepherds of Israel who only take care of themselves. Should not shepherds take care of the flock? You eat the curds, clothe yourselves with the wool, and slaughter the choice animals, but you do not take care of the flock. You have not strengthened the weak, or healed the sick, or bound up the injured. You have not brought back the strays, or searched for the lost. You have ruled them harshly and brutally, so they were scattered because there was no shepherd, and when they were scattered, they became food for all the wild animals." My sheep wandered over all the mountains and on every high hill. They were scattered over the whole earth, and no one searched or looked for them. Heavenly Father, allow your word to speak to each one of us. Lord, we ask that you would fulfill the purpose of your holy word, and that it would challenge us. It would correct us if needed. It would inspire us. Lord, it, it will uh, cause us to go further in our faith and in our walk with you than we've ever gone before. Lord, I pray that your word will penetrate our very being right now. And Lord, as has been mentioned already, that you would just give us that new, that new word, Lord God. That new word, Lord, that will take us to great and high places. We pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. you. May be seated and keep your uh, Bibles open there, and uh, we'll be referring back there as well as uh, a couple other passages. You know, with recent events, world events, national events, headlines, uh, even I'll say universal events, because we've talked about the blood moons. You know, and uh, uh, it took place in the spring and uh, uh, the, the two blood moons that are yet to come here in the fall. And again, not to go back to uh, what we've preached on before. But uh, uh, again, and, and when we look at all that is happening universally, internationally, and nationally, and what's going on in this world, people, I've had people ask me outright, what should we be doing? What should we do? You know, even the, the, the idea that something has to be done. You know, uh, our, our, our nation is, is making decisions that uh, are going to affect uh, uh, God's uh, uh, blessings upon us. Uh, uh, the, the world is in chaos. And we should be doing something. What should we be doing? And that question, we need to understand, uh, that, that question is, it, it, it's not a new question. It's not a new question that people have asked and that even asked the, uh, of the Lord, uh, what, what should we be doing? We, 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 we need to understand everything that's taking place, universally, internationally, nationally. It's pointing to the eminent return of Christ, his second coming. 
that he prophesied, that God's word prophesied. He, Jesus himself said that uh, he would come again, he would return. And so it all points to that, his, his eminent return. You know, uh, but, but what should we be doing? What should we be doing? How can we change the, uh, the, the course of this world? How can we change uh, the course of our nation? We need to understand that this is the same question, literally, that was asked by multitudes of John the Baptist. I'm not going to read from it, but in Luke chapter 3, you can kind of maybe, uh, in, fact, in fact, Luke chapter 2 is written there in your sermon notes as far as a reference. And I encourage you to maybe spend uh, some time there this week just on your own. But Luke chapter 3 reveals to us John the Baptist and his ministry as he was preparing the way for Jesus' first coming, the Messiah. The Old Testament points to the coming of the Messiah, and, and uh, uh, suddenly where there hadn't been any uh, word from the Lord for even centuries, you know, the, from the Old Testament to what we now call the New Testament, John the Baptist was raised up, and God sent him to begin to prepare the way for the Messiah, God's Son, Jesus Christ. And so John the Baptist, uh, we, we find him uh, in the wilderness, in the desert, and he's, he's preaching and uh, he's sharing uh, uh, the, the, the truth of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, and, and he's uh, teaching the people and uh, telling them to produce fruit in keeping with their repentance and their faith in, in the Lord, and, and uh, just preparing them that the Messiah is, is there. He's there already. He's there. And he's going to be revealed. And the people, we're told in Luke chapter uh, 13, uh, that, that, the, that the people uh, came to John the Baptist and the crowd asked, what should we do then? What should we do? And John, he, he, he teaches them and he says, uh, just to get the examples that are given here in Luke chapter 3, he says, if a man has uh, two coats, let him share one with someone else. And if he has food, to do the same. And it's a simple lesson. But it's that idea of, of, of what should we do? What should we do? See, first of all, we, I want you to understand, uh, John the Baptist, his message and his answer to the people can be summed up two things. First of all, our repentance to God. He, his message was repent for the kingdom of God is near. And when that repentance, that means turn back to God. Turn back to God. So his message is to repent to God. But then secondly, his message had to do with our responses to others. How we were to respond to our fellow man. And when, when people ask, what should we do? That's what he was sharing. He was sharing. How do you respond to others? And again, it's that idea that he was telling them, produce fruit in keeping with your repentance. Your repentance to God, and then the fruit of that repentance, how you respond to others. What should I do? What should I be doing? Well, it has to do with repenting to God, turning back to him. And then from there, the evidence, the fruit of our repentance is how we respond to others. And so that idea, of if, he had, if a man has two coats to give, to give him, did you ever take inventory how many coats you have? I'm serious. I could, I, I, I could challenge you with this. If you let me come into your house and into your closet and let me take a coat from your closet, I guarantee you wouldn't miss it. I know if you did the same to me, I wouldn't miss it. I got this coat. I, I have, I, 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 based on this, I, I looked at my own closet and, and I got 14 suit coats in there. And I'm like, <laughs> and they do all fit right now, right? <laughs> they do all fit. But I'm like, you know, that, that's just, that's just, Suit coats. Now you say, well, you're a pastor, that's, you know, that's, that, that you're uh, attired or whatever, you know. Uh, but, I mean, if you looked in your, 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 your closet where your jackets and winter coats are, huh? We have an abundance. That's all. Now we got more cashmere. <laughs> Come on over. Come on over. 
Now, I'm, I'm, I'm having a little fun with this, but again, it, it's the idea of understanding again and realizing how much we have. And then to examine how much do we give? How much do we give? And again, I told you this passage from Ezekiel 34 has been a passage that, I mean, I often spend mornings uh, just reading to, uh, again, because it, it, it speaks to, uh, again, Israel and the shepherds, uh, they weren't taking care of the flock. And we know uh, pastors uh, are, are kind of considered shepherds of uh, the, the body of, of Christ. But we understand this is not just uh, about leadership. This is about all of Israel, and this is about all of the church. How do we respond to others? And to answer the question, what should we do? Now also, it says in Luke 3 that it wasn't just the crowds, but it says, it specifies that the tax collectors asked John, you know, what should they do? What should we do? And, and, and John, you know, the, declared to them to, uh, to uh, collect no more than you're required to. So again, there's times that, yes, we have to receive things or we have to collect things, but no more than we have to. And to be able to be giving. And it wasn't just the crowds and the tax collectors, but also we're told that the soldiers, now understand, these are the Roman soldiers. These are not uh, the people of Israel. These are the Roman soldiers. They asked John, what, what should we do then? With the Messiah coming, uh, what, what should we do? And to there, again, was how they responded to others, that they uh, were not to, uh, they, they were not to extort money uh, for protection. They were not to uh, accuse people falsely, since they were the, uh, they were the authority uh, of, of that place. And again, just, just some little things, little tidbits of how we respond to others. Because again, see, we, we get wrapped up in everything that's going on, everything that's taking place, Universally, internationally, and nationally. And what should we do? We've got to do something. It still comes down to what do you do every day toward your fellow man. What do you do to others? Uh, strangers, to, uh, to, to friends, to, to, to family. How do you respond to others? How, how, how do you share? How, how, how do you give? And so, uh, we're, again, we're going to be talking about this over... The, the rest of the summer and, and the, the messages that I, that I have. And, and, and so uh, we, we see here in Luke 3 and then Ezekiel 34, I think uh, the, the answers of the two, what should we do? In lieu of everything going on, what should we do? We don't use it as an excuse and say, oh, the Lord's coming. It could be uh, this September. It could be the tonight. You know, so let's do nothing. No, that's, that's not the answer. We need to see our fellow man and to understand that God has given us a purpose. Well, we see God's ex expectations of service for his believers. Use, utilizing Ezekiel 34. There's, there's five things, there's five specific things there. I don't know if you saw them, and, and, and it's a ver verse 4. And, and it kind of almost can become a little bit of a checklist for our church and, and a checklist for you personally uh, to say, you know, what should I be doing? Well, real quickly, I'm like, again, over the, the coming weeks, I'll share uh, about these, but uh, it says to, to strengthen the weak. To strengthen the weak. It's uh, you know, God's expectations of service for us is to heal the sick, to care for the hurting, to bring back the strays, and to seek for the lost. It's all in verse 4 there. All in verse 4 there. Just a little checklist. And again, I'm not going to spend time on that today. But it gives you something to begin to... I, I want to encourage you. Don't wait for the messages that I'm going to share in regards to these areas. But you. Examine the scriptures. Examine your heart. And ask the Holy Spirit uh, to show you what you should be doing. In strengthening the weak. Healing the sick. Caring for the hurting. Uh, uh, bringing back the strays and seeking for the lost. Well, you know what? This is very similar. Ezekiel 34, this is pretty similar to a teaching of Jesus. 
You can fast forward if you want through your scriptures. And uh, again, I'm not going to read from it, but Matthew chapter 25, where Jesus teaches uh, the multitudes, teaches his disciples about as a sh how he, as a shepherd, was going to separate the goats from the sheep in the final judgment. The righteous from the unrighteous. And again, what list, what checklist does he give there? Feeding the hungry, giving drink to the thirsty, in, in inviting in the stranger, giving clothes to the one needing clothing, looking after the sick, and visiting the one in prison. Again, these are just these are these are just kind of some examples, a, a list, if you will. I encourage you to spend time in it. Matthew 25, write it in the margin there. It's a parallel to Ezekiel 34. God's word challenging us. And here, and I, just let me add this then, just something for you to think about here. I'm, I'm just kind of glossing through this. We're going to go into it more in detail in the coming weeks. But God offers a, a, God's admonitions against disobedience. In Ezekiel 34, uh, you know, he's basically telling Israel, uh, you've been disobedient, that you have not done these things. And, and so his admonition was that in verse 10 of Ezekiel 34, he says that he would remove the blessing. He would remove the blessing that Israel had. But secondly, God himself would rescue those that were missing, those that were hurting, those that uh, were lost. In, in verses 11 through 16 of Ezekiel 34, no less than a dozen times, God says, I will myself or I will do all that he was expecting Israel to do, all that he's expecting you and I to do. What does that tell me? That tells me this. That if we choose not to, God is still going to take care of those who need his love and his grace and his mercy. But woe to those who are disobedient and those who look after only themselves. So what should we be doing? What should we be doing? In a way, Ezekiel 34 is a prophetic word for the coming of Jesus Christ. When God says, I will myself rescue the people. I myself will heal them. I myself. He, he, he was saying that I'm going to come and do what I've asked you to do. And that's what Jesus did. Jesus came. And so we see this as a prophecy of God coming as a, a baby and sending his son to make the plan, to make the way for all mankind to know the blessings and the abundance that God has for them. So that even if Israel didn't do it, even if the church doesn't do it, God himself will see to it that every person has that opportunity to experience God's blessing. But he wants us to do it. And so we, uh, again, Matthew chapter 9, if you turn with me to Matthew chapter 9, I want to add this passage here. And again, this is one of my life verses. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 36. But I want to read verses 35 through 38 for you. And again, you, 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 you go back and you, you've heard me share this passage many, many times. But it says here, Matthew chapter 9, Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. All right, that, that goes Ezekiel 34, that the, the, the shepherds were not, were not there for uh, there in Israel. Verse 37, then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. And I, I, I always like, you know, verse 37, when, 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 when Jesus tells them to basically pray to God that he would send workers. And again, to me, that's, that, that, that's, that's Jesus' little ploy that 
if you pray for workers, God's answer is going to be, well, what about you? Right? If you pray for somebody else to do something, if you don't feel a conviction of the Holy Spirit to say, well, what are you doing? You know, God, 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 God is, is calling us. He's calling us. And, and, and when, we're, when Jesus says to, uh, to pray to, uh, to, to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into the harvest field, it's because that's where he wants to call us to do that. But what we have here, just and I finish this up, and we'll come back to it uh, in the coming weeks. But uh, this, this Jesus' model of ministry here is he, he gives us the example. First of all, to go with purpose. It says there that Jesus went through all the towns and villages. And we understand he went with purpose. And, and it's something he, he had already come with purpose. He came, he was born of a virgin, he was born supernaturally, he became uh, the form of a, uh, of a human being, he left his uh, seat of glory as God, and he became uh, a mortal uh, man uh, with, for a purpose, with a purpose. And, and, and Jesus in his ministry, every day, there was purpose to his ministry. There was purpose to his teaching. There was purpose to everything he did. And, and so we need to understand, it, it starts with the example of to go with purpose. Uh, you and I, we have a purpose as well. You and I have, have a purpose. Uh, we're not just to exist. We're not just to uh, live out this life and, and whatever will happen will happen. Uh, God wants us to go every day. He wants us to go with purpose. That as Jesus went with purpose, God wants us to go with purpose. To go with purpose. And, and God's word is full of these exhortations of, of what he wants us to do and what we should do. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. He has a purpose for it. He has a purpose for you. He has, he has a purpose for me. And everything we do, we must do with purpose. And, and not the purpose to say, oh, I'm going to uh, increase my bank account. I'm going to uh, increase my possessions. That's not the purpose that God has for us. He says, don't lay up treasures in that, uh, that are going to rust and, 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 and corrode and, and waste away, but lay up treasures that are eternal. That's the purpose that God has for you and I. So go with purpose every day. When we leave this place each Sunday, we're to go and have a, a approach the week with purpose. What are we going to do? And if we have to use that checklist uh, of how can we, Lord, help me to strengthen the weak, help, help me to heal the sick, help me to care for someone who's hurting, uh, help me to find somebody who is, uh, is, is straight away, is, is falling away, help me to find, seek the lost. That's our purpose. It's not just to clock in each day and put in our time and, and then come, come home, but it, it's to live with purpose, God's purpose. And secondly, we see Jesus' model of ministry to go with purpose, to look with intention. What does it say? Jesus went through all the towns and villages, all right? Then it says, verse 36, when he saw the crowds. See, he was looking with intention. How, how, how many of you approach each day and you, you look with intention of, God, what can I, what can I do for you today? Who can I touch today. You know, to, to you know, not just have purpose, but then have intention. You know what it means to intentionally do something? Right? I mean, it mean you, you mean to do it. I mean, I, I mean, a lot of things that I look at, I mean, I, I do so many, I so many accidents. <laughs> Alright? But to, to change our perspective and say, I want to do something with intention, with intentional purpose. With intentional purpose. To look upon somebody with an intent to do something, to bless them, to touch them in some way. And that's what Jesus said. It says when he saw the crowds, he already, he, he, he already had a desire, an intention uh, to do something. And so we, we need to have the same thing, the, the, the intention to fulfill our purpose. Understand it this way. If you have no intention to do something, 
for God this week, then your true intention is to do nothing. <laughs> I'm playing with, you know, let me say it again. I know that, what? If you have no intention to do something, then your true intention is to do nothing. We have to intentionally, I mean, each day, you know, have that intent. Lord, I am going to do something to touch somebody for you and to let your grace and mercy do something. Later on, one of the truths I'm going to share with you, not to jump ahead into a message, but it's the idea that we have to do what we can do naturally so God can do what he can do. All right, so you guys already got it. But come, come, you know, for that message. It'll be in a, it'll be in a few, couple of weeks. But we have to do what we can do so God can do what he can do. And we have to have that intention. And if you have anything less than this, your true intention is to do nothing. You have no desire. You're just going to go and try to get through the day. And can I, understand, can I tell you this? That's why a lot of times you're just miserable. Because you have no intention to do something that God wants you to do. And your intention is to do nothing. And so you experience nothing, and so you're miserable. So to, to go with purpose, to look with intention, and even worse, we had this, it comes back to what was God's rebuke to in Ezekiel, that they weren't, the shepherds weren't uh, taking care of the people because they were taking care of themselves. If that's your intention, that's even worse than doing nothing. If your intention is just to take care of yourself, then God's word says that it will be taken away from you. And so what's your intention? intentionally live this life to fulfill that purpose. And lastly, Jesus' example, his model of ministry is to love with compassion. To love with compassion and in parentheses, not condemnation. Not condemnation. And again, we're going to talk more about that. I, got, I have to be real careful here. I'm kind of going off into uh, the, the future messages here. Uh, and I want, we want to have communion here. Uh, so again, God, Jesus' model of ministry to go with purpose, to look with intention, and to love with compassion, not condemnation. He, he, it says that, that he had compassion on them because they, harass, they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Jesus didn't say, well, you got what you deserve. He had compassion for them. They were lost. They were strays. They were hurting. They, uh, they, they were sick. They were weak. And, uh, and again, God, his back to eyes were, what, what should we do? We should be strengthening the weak. We should be healing the sick, caring for the hurting, bringing back the strays, seeking for the lost, doing what you and I can do so God can do the rest. What only he can do. And this is what we're going to deal with. And finally, I say this. Be God's answer for someone's prayer. You ever think that you're crossing paths with somebody that that morning or the night before, they cried out to God and said, God, I need your help. I need you to intervene in my life. And you're the one that's crossing paths with them. And God's desire, God's design, again, beyond our comprehension, but he wants you and I to be his answer to their cry. To do what we can do so that he'll do the rest. He'll do the rest. 